Yeah. Okay. So uh, Mohammed Hussein is going to talk um, on the. Is this Mohammed Hussein? Did you change your title? On the reliability of the photometric and spectroscopic tracers of halo relaxation. So please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Yeah. Good. Perfect. So uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to the efforts that uh, local and scientific committee has made in order to uh, establish this uh, seminar, uh, this conference. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, about the reliability of photometric and spectroscopic tracers of halo relaxation. Beforehand, let me turn on my webcam. <clears throat> okay. You don't know. You have my okay it seems working again hello everybody yeah uh, i thanks uh, local and scientific committee for uh, their efforts in order to establish this conference in these uh, trying times uh, i'm gonna talk about reliability of photometric and spectroscopic tracer relaxation and uh, to begin with Let's start in this way, uh, mainly included in these four parts. In the first part, in the introduction, I'm going to talk about galaxy clusters and groups. Then I will talk about dynamical relaxation of galaxy systems. Uh, after that, uh, I will a little bit talk about relaxation of clusters and groups and finally I will share some of my uh, results and findings with you. Uh, I need to so uh, when we look at the sky we notice something really interesting and fantastic. Uh, galaxies uh, in, in space uh, are distributed uniformly and, you know, they are ran randomly distributed. So we can see some uh, structures in space uh, in some locations and places. We can see that galaxies are distributed more densely with, uh, which we infer as uh, groups and colors. And there are some other regions where we can hardly find any galaxy, which we name uh, as uh, voids. And there are some complicated and complex structures, which we refer as uh, filaments and walls. So, uh, as I'm gonna talk a lot about in clusters and groups in my presentation, uh, I would like to have a general introduction uh, about clusters and groups. Clusters are basically uh, combinations of uh, galaxies which are bounded by gravity to each other. Their typical size uh, is of the order of uh, one to three megaparsec. Their mass is of order of the power for the solar mass. And uh, basically, they are the largest realized structures in the universe. Uh, on the other hand, we have groups. Groups are very hard to uh, clusters, but they are less massive, less populated, and less extended. Their mass is of the of the order of 10 to the power 13 solar mass and i have provided here two images for for better visual visualization the upper uh, image is uh, a, a sample of a sample cluster and the one is 
uh, Hickson group. And you can uh, apparently see that uh, we have fewer galaxies in groups. So uh, uh, clusters and groups can be studied from different uh, points of views. One interesting aspect of these galaxy systems is their dynamic relaxation, and we can categorize them as dynamically relaxed and dynamically unrelaxed. And as can be seen uh, from these two images, we can recognize easily the uh, young individual from the old one. Uh, this can be done for uh, galaxy systems too. We can recognize whether a galaxy system is uh, young or old, or uh, simply we can determine whether they are uh, dynamically relaxed or unrelaxed. Can uh, in this image, uh, uh, systems on the right hand side of this image are uh, dynamically relaxed and all systems in the left hand side are dynamically unrelaxed and not only we can distinguish this fact from looking at these observations they are uh, their appearance are completely different but also uh, can we uh, I mean it by, uh, we can quali quantify it by measuring uh, offset and gap, uh, which we, I will uh, dive into more in the following slides about uh, gap and offset. So one of the best examples of uh, relaxed, and, uh, relaxed and old systems uh, are fossil groups. Fossil groups, those groups uh, which made and you know galaxies has mirrored over a billion of years ago and can determine whether a group is uh, fossil or not by calculating we can determine it observationally by calculating the m12 and uh, we can recognize it uh, via uh, x-ray luminosity as well so if uh, gap is more than two within half a virial radius. And in addition to this, if the X-ray luminosity is greater than 10 to power 42 air per second, we can uh, uh, label this group as a fossil. Uh, in addition to these fossils, uh, for example, fossils are, uh, uh, fossils are more X-ray luminous for a given optical luminosity or uh, addition velocity dispersion fossils show higher x-ray luminosity and temperature uh, in order to better uh, uh, understand uh, the difference between groups and um, groups from uh, young groups i have provided this cartoon plot for you in, the, in this uh, plot, you can see cir some circles which are representing a mass of groups. And uh, in, inside those circles, you can see some objects which are uh, actually, uh, uh, they are uh, galaxies. So uh, we can calculate the mass of, uh, halo, halo mass of groups in redshift one and in present red and we can calculate the uh, ratio of uh, mass in this two, uh, time and two redshift. If this ratio is less than equal, uh, less than one, and greater than 0.5, and beside this, if the gap is greater than two, label this group as old or fossil. On the other hand, if we calculate this uh, uh, fraction and we find that this fraction is less than 0.5 and gap b less than 2 we can label this system as uh, dynamically young and dynamically unrelaxed and young group so uh, yeah maybe you uh, might uh, maybe you are interested to ask me uh, so what what's the importance of 
dynamical status of a group or a cluster. I would say that uh, it has been shown that uh, groups and clusters environment are really, really important uh, things that have direct consequence upon galaxies properties. And via different and various studies, it has been shown that uh, properties of uh, groups members is directly correlated to uh, the host galaxy, uh, galaxy groups or uh, cluster. For example, it has been shown that galaxy merger in a group can be more efficient because uh, velocity of galaxies are lower in group compared to clusters and it can lead to different morphology of galaxies. In addition to this, aging activities of luminous elliptical galaxies are shown to be correlated with dynamical state of parent halo. And uh, also, a star formation is uh, correlated with the dynamical state of the host halo. And finally, it has been shown that galaxies in the relaxed groups tend to be redder than galaxies in unrelaxed groups. So uh, we can see how important the dynamical state of a group or cluster could be. Uh, so uh, there is a question, there might be a question that how can we measure the relaxation state of uh, galaxy systems? And uh, there are mainly different uh, proxies and criteria to determine whether a group is relaxed or unrelaxed. And I have categorized them here, some of them here, as uh, photometric criteria and spectroscopic criteria, which I will dive into more details and explain more about these criteria in the following slides. So before I talk about uh, uh, more about our uh, study understanding, I would uh, studies and researches about uh, relaxation criteria. I'd like to uh, say that there is our motivation. Uh, we were interested to find an economical and reliable method for determining dynamical relaxation state in galaxy groups and clusters. And with the collaboration with Professor Osro Shahi and uh, Mr. Frahang, Mr. Raouf Ghazali, uh, we, uh, we could uh, investigate and study uh, majority of uh, available uh, relaxation practices and uh, not only uh, observations, but also uh, we have uh, uh, applied these criteria on uh, simulations, which uh, I will talk about it soon. So, uh, so the simulated data that we have used uh, comes from Millennium Simulation. Uh, with uh, lambda CDM cosmology, with the following parameters that you can see here, and uh, the simulation uh, size, box size, and particles uh, properties are shown here that you can see. Uh, the size of uh, edge of the simulation box is 500 megaparsec, and we have 10 to power 10 particles, and we have. Uh, for it, uh, 64 uh, snapshots uh, between the, uh, 127 to uh, per year. And the observed data that we have used comes from SDSS, Chandra, and XMM Newton. And basically, we have used Yang catalog, uh, which uh, uses uh, uh, SDSS data release seven in order to make a catalog of groups. And this catalog contains uh, uh, both galaxies and clusters. And we, because we were interested to have an accurate classification, uh, we have 
uh, use a subset of Yang catalog with minimum 10, 10 members. Uh, and uh, after this sample, because we uh, were interested to uh, have X-ray observations and X-ray analysis, we have cross-matched Yang catalog with um, Yang catalog uh, uh, has been uh, cast match with uh, X-ray observations of Chan and SMM, and finally uh, we could uh, have uh, 50 clusters to study. And these clusters are uh, all have all clean exposure times. So that. To begin uh, talking about uh, relaxation criteria, uh, I begin with luminosity gap. Luminosity gap is a magnetic difference between the first and second brightest galaxy in a group. As you can see in this image, we uh, uh, those system where uh, gap is greater than two. We have more uh, relaxed uh, systems and for that uh, for those systems that uh, the gap is less than two, we have more younger uh, groups uh, we have uh, studied and uh, we try to calculate gap and uh, and calculate the relation between gap and age for each individual cluster, and uh, we studied the relation between age and gap, which you can find in this plot. We see that as we uh, expected, uh, the correlation is positive, and as, um, and by um, we see that when age of the system increases, the gap increases, and it's what we expect from uh, our pre our, our uh, it's what we expect. And you can see that the experiment correlation coefficient uh, is not too bad, it's 0.36. Another uh, relaxation criteria is luminosity descent. And it is basically the difference between the location of brightest group and group or cluster. And, and uh, for relaxed, Groups and clusters uh, offset be a small. Uh, in other words, the BGG is located near the center. And on the other hand, for unrelaxed ones, it should be large. And as you can see in this plot, by increasing the age of uh, the system, we can see that offset decreased. And it satisfies uh, previous notion about this quantity. And you can see the experiment correlation function, which shows how much correlated uh, uh, two quantities are, is not too bad, but it's too large as well. So, so uh, we, uh, this, uh, in order to have a more, uh, more accurate criteria to determine whether a system is relaxed or unrelaxed, uh, we uh, came up with an idea to somehow uh, combine uh, gap and offset and introduce a new criteria which we call a bivariate relation and calculate uh, the relationship between bivariate correlation with age. And we can see that the spherical relation uh, factor uh, has increased dramatically uh, just using a gap or offset and it is showing more promising criteria to determine whether the system is relaxed or unrelaxed. So uh, in order to better uh, understand the concept of bivariate relation, I have provided this carton plot for you. Clusters and groups are uh, tagged as relaxed or unrelaxed based on using just gap or offset. If we just look at gap, we can see that uh, the gap on relaxed one is less than two, and the gap for relaxed one is greater than two. If we just look at offset, we can see that the distance between 
allocation of BGG and central group is large. On the other hand, for Lex one, it is so. Uh, you hear me properly? Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, the bivariant correlation that we are defining is a combination of delta gap and offset, which uh, we are not just looking at one of them, but we are looking at these two criteria at the same time, which you can see in this in the search. So, uh, uh, the there are some aspect, aspect, uh, those criteria that I explained for you were photometric criteria, but we have some spectroscopic proxies. Uh, one of the most famous one is Anderson Darling uh, statistic and test. Anderson Darling statistics basically measure how much a group or cluster velocity distribution of in group or cluster is Gaussian. And basically, it uh, calculate the difference of a normal ideal distribution from the distribu velocity distribution of uh, groups and galaxies. Uh, the smaller, the better, and the smaller uh, this quantity, the more relaxed uh, a group uh, will be. And you can see that uh, amazingly, uh, the correlation between uh, Anderson and age is uh, quite uh, small, and you know uh, we don't see a, 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 a high correlation between t these two quantities. But the trend is as we expected. So another spectroscopic quantity that we can measure is velocity segregation. Velocity segregation uh, is the offset between the brightest group galaxy and the ice spectroscopic galaxy within half a virial radius. And this quantity again is a small for old systems and is large for young systems. Uh, it's time to talk about uh, X ray proxies to measure how much a system is. Uh, actually uh, relaxed or unrelaxed. And uh, to do this, I would like to talk about a little bit about phot photon uh, asymmetry, which means the degree to which the count profile by an X-ray observation is axisymmetric around the X-ray peak. I don't want to talk about the formulation of uh, formulation and uh, how we calculate this quantity, but I want uh, I would like to draw your attention to this image. The top uh, left part of this image, you can see that uh, X-ray forms of a sample uh, group is distributed spherically and symmetrically. And the A photon asymmetry for this is very small. It's zero, actually. And when we uh, move from left to right and from up to down, you can see that in this, on the uh, down right corner of this image, uh, we don't see any symmetry in photon distribution of photons. And uh, when we calculate an asymmetry for this group, we can see that it's quite large, quite large. And this system is uh, apparently an unrelaxed group, while this one is a relaxed one. So we have calculated photon asymmetry correlation uh, with different uh, spectroscopic and uh, photometric criteria, which you can see in these images. And uh, you can see that uh, the correlation between uh, uh, photon asymmetry and offset, gap, anderson dong and bivariant correlation and, uh, photo and velocity segregation. And interest, interestingly, we can see that by applying those formulas that we found from simulation and applying for observation, we see the strangulation is between photon asymmetry and bivariant question that we are defining compared to all other criteria that we have uh, provided in this uh, slide. 
Uh, another interesting uh, quantity that can measure the relaxation state of a group or a cluster is centroid shift, which measures the shift of the X-ray surface brightness centroid in different radial apertures. We can calculate it based on this formula. And again, uh, you can see that for a relaxed system, uh, centroid shift is small. But when we move from left to right and from up to down, it, here you can see the uh, old, uh, youngest one is apparently very unrelaxed, and the centroid shift is quite large uh, in this um, too. So, in related uh, correlation between uh, centroid shift different spectroscopy and photometric uh, proxies and again we see the correlation between the bivariant one that we have defined and photo and centroid shift largest for uh, uh, bivariant these two quantities compared to all other uh, correlations that provided for other uh, uh, proxies. So here, yeah. So in order to better be able to compare these findings, I have provided uh, these tables for you uh, to better compare our findings with uh, uh, with other proxies uh, available. In the first table, you can see that the correlation of age with other criteria uh, are reported in this column and interestingly you can see that as i claimed in the previous slide the one uh, the correlation between bivariant and age is uh, the uh, strongest one this is simulation table two and table three are uh, results of uh, uh, observation and again, we can see that uh, RS, Sperman correlation fact, is strongest for uh, between for B and uh, photon uh, asymmetry. And uh, again, when we calculate the same thing for uh, set shift and other uh, relaxation proxies, we can see that uh, interestingly, the relation between bivariant correlation and uh, Central chip is uh, a strong, a strong uh, uh, for this. So here is more economic and reliable to use the bivariant correlation B rather than and dolly uh, to figure out if a galaxy is relaxed or not. So to summarize, I would like to draw your attention to these points. Quickly, uh, note that. It's better to use a combination of gap and offset as a character for halo relaxation state and using them individually. This bivariate relation that we have found from uh, simulations show a, a strong correlation with the X ray halo relaxation indication. In the course. We show that the bivariant benchmark is more reliable than Anderson Dahl. Not only in simulations but in observations. From simulations, we find that the velocity segregation uh, yeah, has a stronger correlation halo edge compared to A2. In contrast, A2 has a stronger correlation with indicators compared to velocity segregation. And finally, the advantages of uh, photometric relation outweigh the of spectroscopic measures. We, we support this claim uh, via investigating simulations and observation. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed Hussain. Uh, thank you for keeping the time. Uh, so if there is any questions, comments, please type in or raise your hand in order to Turn your microphone on. Yes, please. Um, 
can I ask a question? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Um, so thank you for this talk. And I um, did not fully understand the um, idea of uh, referring to these systems as being a realization or perhaps be a better term. I understand from Stellar Dynamics that um, civilization achieved in, uh, one has the equipartition in the system, but uh, it's very a system is realized if um, um, its gravitational and kinetic energy um, are balanced, which means it's not changing morphologically anymore. Um, I, um, so I'm a bit unsure. Um, I, I think it's used in your community. Um, the word relaxation is used very commonly, but I, uh, from Stella Dynamics, I, um, I would understand um, energy equipartition uh, under relaxation. And I just wanted to hear what you would like to say to that, or maybe you have an ex uh, um, you can illuminate my non-understanding of using the concept of relaxation in this, um, uh, you know, in this, on this problem. Yeah, that's a mm -hmm. fantastic question. If I have understood clearly, you would like me to more explain in details about uh, the relaxation states of a, uh, a cluster. So basically, uh, we categorize uh, clusters and groups uh, as dynamically relaxed or unrelaxed if uh, they don't have any uh, ongoing mergers. And you know, uh, dynamically all systems have evolved. And, you know, they have uh, undergone mergers and uh, this fact shows its inherent aspects of uh, observations of and uh, that I explained based on different uh, uh, However, uh, dynamically young groups are those groups that uh, are evolving and you know are undergoing merger and you know uh, they have evolved completely which, which, which uh, this fact shows itself via different is uh, spectroscopically or uh, strictly i don't know if i have covered uh, your question properly so i think that habib is uh, trying to discuss uh, hi, could you please uh, turn on your microphone? Uh, hello, uh, just a very quick uh, response. Thank you very much. Uh, so yes, relaxation is just a simple, basically, uh, term to say that the galaxies are within the group. They are not uh, influenced by external forces or mergers with other galaxy groups. So. Um, Basically, it says that, look, there is this gravitational potential well, uh, which is made of dark matter. Uh, talking about it with Powell is not going to be very easy. Um, but anyway, um, there's the dark matter and the galaxies are within this potential well. Then there is the X-ray gas, which is, again, building up the potential well. And uh, there is not much going on in terms of uh, being influenced by external forces. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, Paul says my suggestion would be to use the term realization rather than relaxation. So, if you agree. Um, then you can discuss it later.